Now, let's do something um, a little bit bigger. And maybe this is just to like kind of review the process, but then also we'll encounter an integral that um, I want to make sure that everyone kind of knows how to, to get at. So let's say we want to solve this differential equation. Y double prime minus 3y prime plus 2y equals 1 over uh, 1 plus e to the minus x. So let's say we want to solve that differential equation. Okay. So the first thing that we would do, we're going to use this reduction of order method, right? And the reduction of order method requires us to know a solution to the associated homogeneous equation, right? And then we do some stuff, right? That stuff is kind of always the same. In this case, we do know a solution to the homogeneous equation, and you can take any solution you want. Now, you can get that solution by doing this stuff, just like you all did the last several days or whatever. I'm just going to write it down, though. Let's just observe that e to the 2x is a solution to the associated homogeneous equation, right? Yeah, by doing the polynomial and factoring the polynomial and looking at the roots and stuff. Is there multiplying it the entire equation? Exactly, exactly. So that's what we'll do. Now we'll like build off of this. Just like this is the standard reduction of order trick, and a lot of this stuff is going to kind of look the same, but we're going to encounter an integral that, like I said before, I want to make sure that everyone is uh, okay with. So we'll set y equal to perhaps e to the 2x times z. That'd be a good choice, right? And then uh, what does that mean the derivative is? So the derivative is going to be uh, e to the 2x times z prime plus 2e to the 2x times z, right? By using the product rule. And then you can use the product rule again to get e to the 2x times z double prime uh, plus 4z prime e to the 2x plus uh, 4 e to the 2x times z. For some reason, like my z in the middle like got on the other side of the e to the 2x, but it's kind of neither here nor there. So I just use the product rule again. Or I use that trick for quick second derivatives. Either one is fine. Okay, so now let's plug all of this in to the left-hand side of the differential equation and see what we get. So notice that every term there is connected to an e to the 2x, so I can factor it out. Now, do you need to do this like as we write it down? I don't think so, but it does make things a little bit easier to write down. Okay, so now the y double prime term will be z double prime plus 4z prime uh, plus uh, 4z, right? That's our uh, y double prime term. And then here's the y prime term, right? But it's being multiplied by negative 3. So let's do that. So that's going to be minus 3z prime minus 6z. And then 2y, but that's just going to be plus 2z. OK. So that would be all of this, right? But now we want all of this to be equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x, right? OK, so let's see. Can we cancel some things out? Yeah. Great. And so this turns into the following. This turns into z double prime. Uh, minus what? Plus z prime equals e to the minus 2x over 1 plus e to the minus x. Right? Does that look right? Okay, good. Now, uh, you can solve this using the methods of a first order linear differential equation, right? Because this is a first order linear differential equation if you think about your function being z prime. Now, do, if you want to go ahead and like set w equal to z prime in order to see that more clearly, then, then do that. So that's going to give us 
this first order differential equation, w prime plus w equals e to the minus 2x over 1 minus e to the minus x. Okay, and now, did I make a mistake yet? By typo, <laughs> my favorite reason. In fact, I was working this example out and like I've already recognized that I made a mistake in one of the steps of the example and so everything I have written down there is garbage. Now I want to do like something here. We could do the alpha thing and write down the solution, right? And feel free to do that, but sometimes when we look at this kind of thing over here, there's an easier way. And the easier way is to envision what it would take to make this thing on the left-hand side look like the product rule has occurred. And let's observe that if we multiply this left-hand side by e to the x, then, well, we have something like this. And this left-hand side, in fact, keeping the product rule in mind, is just the derivative of e to the x times w, right? Now this is like, in fact, just doing the um, alpha calculation by hand or whatever, but sometimes it's like a little cleaner to do that. Um, if you can just like kind of eyeball this right here and guess what you should multiply by in order to do this. Now, if you look at this for like more than 90 seconds, and you can't see a function to multiply it by so that you do something like this, then jump to doing it the way we have in class with the algorithm or whatever. But I think it's nice to like kind of brain it for a second just to see if there's something a little bit more clever. Yes? How did you get e to the minus x over 1 minus x? Because I multiplied everything by e to the x in order to make this left-hand side look like a derivative had been taken of a... Yeah, e to the x times e to the minus 2x is going to be e to the x minus 2x, which is e to the minus x. OK, so we've got something like this. And now, well, now we can take the antiderivative of both sides. And we have e to the x times w equals the antiderivative of e to the minus x over 1 plus e to the minus x. And now that I haven't made the mistake, this problem isn't quite as gnarly as like I have written down. Um, but now, how would we take this antiderivative? Yeah, so u would be e to the minus x. That makes du equal to minus e to the minus x dx. So this is minus du, right? And then this thing down here is simply uh, u. So this turns into minus the integral of du over 1 plus u. So that's going to be minus the natural log of 1 plus u plus a constant. But that's going to be minus the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x plus a constant. Right? Yeah, the minus sign got right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, see, the minus sign yeah. came in from the du. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we're like almost home free. Check it out. We can like say w is now equal to a constant times e to the minus x minus e to the minus x times the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x. But let's observe that that w is in fact equal to z prime, right? Is the bottom one or a c? That's a c plus a constant. Yeah, a constant, a constant yeah, of integration. Yeah, constant, yeah. I was like, that looks like a c. So we've got z prime is c e to the minus x uh, minus e to the minus x natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x. Okay, so now. That means that z is equal to 
a c times e to the minus x, taking the antiderivative of that, right? Then absorbing the minus sign into the constant. And then minus the antiderivative of e to the minus x times the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x dx. OK. And now maybe I'll do like one more step because we're almost home free, right? Notice that uh, y is equal to e to the 2x times z, right? So we can, in fact, write y down Im immediately, correct? Because we could just multiply all of that by e to the 2x and we'll have y. But observe that this integral right here still stands in our way, right? So how are we going to do that integral? It's kind of tricky. You can do integration by parts, but there's this nice kind of other trick that exists, but is not really like taught because there are only so many algorithms you can teach in calculus too. But you can take u and set it equal to this whole thing, the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x. I thought you were going to do the whole thing by portion, so we're going to just go in the middle. No, no, no. No, this is actually a little bit better, I think. Yeah. So now check it out. Now let's exponentiate, and we'll have e to the u is equal to 1 plus e to the minus x, right? But that means that e to the minus x is equal to e to the u minus 1. But now we can take the derivative of both sides of this. So if we take the derivative of both sides of this, minus e to the minus x dx is equal to e to the u du. Oh, look at that. Now check it out. So this minus e to the minus x dx is in fact this and this, right? Even with that minus sign out there, right? And then this whole thing right here is u. So this is like sort of advanced creative integration technique here, right? But now, what does that leave us with? So now we have z is equal to a constant. I'm now going to call that constant c1 times e to the minus x. And then it's going to be plus the integral of uh, u times e to the u du, right? Because like, look, we've got u right here, and then this e to the minus x dx is e to the u du, right? Well, with that minus sign there, which got like, canceled. But now, like, uh, we've taken the antiderivative of this like 100 times, right? You would do integration by parts on that. And so that gives us c1 e to the minus x plus u e to the u minus e to the u plus c2. And now you plug that value of u back in. So let's see. That's going to give us z equals uh, c1 e to the x plus. So now u is the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x. And then e to the u, well, look, we already calculated that right there. That's 1 plus e to the minus x. And then that's going to be minus 1 plus e to the minus x plus our constant c2. And so there we have it. Now, that isn't like the whole thing, because that's actually a z, right? But we want y. So now y is equal to e to the 2x times z. So if we multiply everything there by e to the 2x, what happens? Well, let's be careful to make sure we didn't lose that e to the minus x there. So that's going to give us uh, c1 uh, times e to the x, and then plus the natural log of 1 plus e to the minus x times e to the 2x plus e to the x, right? And then minus e to the 2x plus e to the x uh, plus c2 e to the 2x. 
There we have it. And then you can like, actually can't really put things together there, right? But that's what we get in the end. So it's kind of intricate, but again, like, I don't know, that's just the situation. And notice that we got this C2 e to the 2x out, right? And if you had solved this, um, just the associated homogeneous equation, that would have been your y2. Or wait, no, sorry. We got this C1 e to the x out, and that would have been your y2. Because notice we got our y1 out of this already, right? So this is the most general equation. The orange underline is the homogeneous part, and then the rest of it is the um, particular part. Okay. Okay. So, does that seem okay? All right. So, I don't know. What's the takeaway? <laughs> um, anyway, the takeaway is I don't know, like, just keep going or something? Yeah. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't give it. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> Yeah, writing numbers. Don't give up. <laughs> Take a picture of the board, make it into a poster, don't give up, keep going. <laughs> You'll get there eventually.